This is a man who is not fit for office. It has been said, Mr Speaker, the ultimate measure of a person is not where they stand in moments of comfort, but where they stand at times of challenge and controversy. This is a time of challenge, and so I ask does the Prime Minister realise not only is the member racist, he is stoking division in communities and has a record of dishonesty. Does the Prime Minister honestly believe... Order! Uh, order. If the Right Honourable Gentleman is referring to a current member of this House, I don't know whether he is, but if he is, he should be extremely careful in the language he uses. He should have notified the member in advance. But I would urge him, I would urge him to weigh his words. Mr Ian Blackford. Oh, and indeed, and indeed, and I think it would be much better if for now he would withdraw any allegation of racism order against any particular member. I don't think that this is the forum. I don't think it's the right way to behave. Mr Ian Blackford. Mr Speaker, I have informed the member, but the member has called Muslim women letterboxes, described African people as having watermelon smiles, and another disgusting slur that I would never dignify by repeating. If that's not racist, Mr Speaker, I don't know what is. If I decide to wear a turban, or you decide to wear a cross, or he decides to wear a kippah or a skull cap, or she decides to wear a hijab or a burqa, does that mean that it is open season for right honourable members of this House to make derogatory and divisive remarks about our appearance? For those of us who from a young age have had to endure and face up to being called names such as Towelhead or Taliban or coming from Bongo Bongo land, we can appreciate full well the hurt and pain felt by already vulnerable Muslim women when they are described as looking like bank robbers and letterboxes. So, so rather than hide behind sham and whitewash investigations, when will the Prime Minister finally apologise for his derogatory and racist remarks? Which Racist remarks, Mr. Speaker, which have led to a spike in hate crime. Yeah. And given the increasing prevalence of yeah. such incidents within his party, when will the Prime Minister finally order an inquiry into Islamophobia within the Conservative Party? Yeah. Something which he and his Chancellor promised on national television. Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree that you brought about an unfortunate anti Muslim rhetoric? I, do, I, I, I don't, and uh, I, I would be appalled if that. Uh, were the case. I, and, and actually, I received, uh, having written that piece, I received overwhelming support, uh, not just from um, Muslims, but also, above all, from Muslim women uh, who agreed with me that uh, there could be would you ever a, use those oppressive. Words again? oppressive uh, uh, yes, of course I would. Of, uh, we are Europeans. Uh, he was met with near silence there, and there he is embracing his girlfriend, uh, Carrie Simmons. Not. Another headache for the British Prime Minister Theresa May at the Conservatives' annual conference and its Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson again providing it. The favourite of the party faithfuls given a typical barnstorming conference performance this week. Now some typically unguarded comments about Libya have outraged many. They literally have got a brilliant vision to turn Sirt into the next, uh, with, the, with, the work, with the help of the municipality of Sirt, to turn it into the next Dubai. The only thing they've got to do is clear the dead bodies. He has been unavailable for comment ever since. Mr Johnson, was it an appropriate language? There have been renewed calls for his resignation and some observers believe this latest gaffe may, if not cost him his job, at least see him put his leadership ambitions on hold. What do you think about Boris Johnson calling gay people tank top bum boys? I can't speak for like he's not my friend. I'm not here to no, campaign. No, no, for I know. Him. But ever since he's become prime minister, yeah. I get people sending me, uh, calling me a, a bum boy, uh, with things like Matt Boris in their Twitter profiles. I mean, do you think it's acceptable to call gay people bum boys? No, I don't think it's acceptable. But is it call... homophobic? No, no, no. Do you accept it? No, I don't. I don't think it's acceptable to call. But is it I'm, homophobic? I'm not, I'm... If you heard someone yelling at gay person bum boy, would you accept that's homophobic? If, if I heard somebody yelling, then I would actually step in and say that's unacceptable. But would you say it's unacceptable? But 
we've got to call bigotry what it is. Yeah. Is calling a gay person a bum boy homophobic? Right, no, but, that, but the whole point is, like, you know... No. This is slightly... This is if, what alarms me, because of your partisan support for... No, it's not, it's, not but, part, it's not partisan support. So, 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 so the whole point is, like, I hear, I, I hear several... Why yeah. can't you say and homophobic? They say, and they I say, don't get it. Because he's not a homophobe, and I so, know that. So is the term bum boy homophobic? It depends on the context it's being said. One. Why? Because Boris was caught on tape as well. Ha ha ha. Richard Comic, yes, that's how I say so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, what was that? <laughs> I said written a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said ha 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 richly comic. Mm. Which it jolly well was. <laughs> what were you recorded saying? I t can you, honestly I don't remember. I do. <laughs> Boris was on tape talking to Darius Guppy, his a very great man. I don't want to be totally stitched up here. I have <laughs> <laughs> what you want and what you don't uh, want. Was... <laughs> no, he was a school friend, wasn't he? A great chap, yeah. And That's a great right. chap, yep. despite went, being went... a convicted fraudster. Convicted fraudster, convicted fraud, went very, very sadly wrong. Yep. yep. Major goof. And one of the ways he went wrong is ringing you up on tape and suggesting that you help him beat up a journalist who was looking into him. That did come up. <laughs> I, I won't deny that did come up. That, I, 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 think, I don't think I've ever commented on this before, so I'd better watch my words very carefully. That mm. did come up. That oh. did come up. It's perfectly true that Darius and I had a long and rambling conversation which took in many heroes of, many military heroes that Darius admired. Rommel. Hence Major Goof that you Rommel. mentioned just now. <laughs> and since you choose to bring up this unhappy episode, I yep. won't... I won't deny a word of it. I won't. I, I'm not ashamed of it. I did discuss how... You sound like George Michael. You're not ashamed of it. <laughs> what are you not ashamed of, though, Boris? <coughs> Whatever there is not to be ashamed of. <laughs> no, that's... He was trying to get the address of this journalist out of you, wasn't he? Yes, and owing to my great incompetence as a journalist, I wasn't able to provide... Mm, it. <laughs> so so yeah. the journalist didn't get beaten up in the end, but no thanks to you. <sighs> I suppose you could say it was thanks to me that you didn't get beaten up. Because you didn't do what you told your mate you'd do. But it seems to be perfectly reasonable. So where's the Darius, or Darius, now then? Darry. Sorry, where's Darry? Darry. Darry. Where does he live Darry. now? I don't know where he is now. I don't know where he is now. I thought he lives in Northorpe House, doesn't he? <sighs> Look, I don't know, Albin. You better ring him up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm way out of my depth here. I've been yeah. totally stitched up. I want it on the record. I've, uh, I've walked straight into a massive elephant trap. I should have spotted it. <laughs> Thank you.
Ben, you've lived through six weeks of this, and if the numbers, yeah. if the numbers that are coming from the Chinese government are right, they've now pretty much got a grip on this. How do you view yeah. from there the so way the way that Boris example, Johnson is doing it? Uh, it's, it's, it's terrible. Um, so my province, which is, is similar in size to the UK in population and geographically, mm -hmm. um, we haven't had any new cases for, uh, I think it's 15 or 16 days now. Wow. So that's why they've started to relax the yes. Um, yes. restrictions. And the, the cases in Italy are far worse than anywhere in China except for uh, the outbreak, the epicenter, Wuhan. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no other province in China that's had anywhere near as many cases as Italy. Uh, I think the most is maybe one or two thousand. Um, so it's obviously worked very well. Um, like the restrictions on flights and, and checks on people, these should have been done weeks ago, if not Absolutely. months ago. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But recently, there was a province near next to mine which had a flight from Iran come in, and they reported that there was four or five people on that flight that were um, coming in with the coronavirus. But obviously, here, um, inbound flights from other countries, they're quarantined immediately, so mm. they can't. Yeah, we're not doing anything like, like that. If these, people, if these people just get on the subway or go to restaurants or sporting events like oh, it's going to spread ben, very quickly ben, you just ben, have to look they're sitting on the london, have to look they're Wuhan. sitting on the underground now yeah. they're sitting on the london underground yeah. now having come in the heath right this morning boris johnson of course had one job one job i'm shaking hands continues i was at a i was at a hospital the other night where i think there were a few there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and i shook hands with everybody Great. I mean, the one bit of advice that the country has agreed upon, I think, wasn't it? Washing, but, hands, but, but washing hands and, and, and avoiding washing. contact. Yes. But there he is.